I want to call your attention to the 51st Psalm, um, the first 10 verses, and then the book of James, the first chapter, the 23rd and the 24th verses. Psalm 51, 1 through 10, very familiar passage of scripture after David had uh, received the word from the prophet Nathan after he had messed up and tried to cover up his stuff. And when Nathan pointed his finger in his face and said, thou art the man. David writes these words and he says, have mercy on me. O oh God, according to your unfailing love, according to your greatness, blot out my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. James, the first chapter, 23rd verse and the 24th verse says, Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says. It's like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Anyone who hears the word does not what it says. It's like somebody who looks at his face in the mirror, looking at himself or herself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Well, everybody here, I'm certain, has heard the news of Michael Jackson's passing. Amen. Amen. But there are some familiar words that he spoke that I want to underscore today from this verse of scripture. And look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. Go on, tell somebody else, don't look at me. Look at the one in the mirror. There comes a time in each and every one of our lives that we need to take a look at where we are and what we do. A time when we need to examine ourselves and ask ourselves the question, am I doing my best to serve the Lord? A lot of us, when asking this question, uh, see things in ourselves that we wish we could change. We have feelings and thoughts and problems and attitudes that we know we need to change. And I believe everyone here should continue to take a look at themselves and realize that there is something in each of our lives that is not the way that we want it to be. We need to take a conscious effort to make a change in the way that we walk, in the way that we talk, the way that we think the way that we act. We need to make a change for the better. To take on the attitude that it's time for a new me. Time for me to give my all 
to the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know this morning, it's time that we make a change for the betterment of all of us. If we're going to make things better for any of us, any type of change, it must begin within us. It said that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And since we are knitted together as a body of baptized believers, we each need to make sure that we are not the weakest link. Can I get a witness? We need to make sure that we are not the ones that are holding up progress. We are not the ones that are bringing the wheels to a screeching halt while everyone else is trying to move forward. I believe some of the most profound lyrics that were ever written and sung by the late Michael Jackson who passed away this past Thursday went like this. He said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. So many times we are able to see the tiny faults that other folks have. We see the moat in their eye and focus on them so much that we miss our own giant faults or the beams that's in our own eyes. What are you trying to say, Pastor Swan? The, the, the moat represented the, a splinter and the beam represented an entire log. <laughs> and we're focusing on the splinters that we see in other folks' lives. And we can't see the pile of firewood in our own life. Amen. Matthew 7, 4, and 5. How wilt thou say to your brother, let me pull the mold out of thine eye? And behold, a beam is in thy own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly how to cast the moat out of your brother's eye. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, to put it plain and simple, we must do what Michael told us. Right. Amen. And rightly put it on one of these songs, we've got to start with the man in the mirror. The one that we see every single day. And we've got to ask him or her to change their ways. Just think about it. If every one of us changed something about ourselves that we know is not a good trait, what a wonderful place this would be. Matter of fact, somebody said you ought to ask the question, if everyone in this church was like me, tell me what kind of church would it be? Would it be a church of love or would everybody be holding a grudge? What kind of church would it be? I've heard people say, well, pastor, I would go to church, but I don't go to church because there's too many hypocrites up in that church. And I say, that's all right, we got room for one more. <laughs> and if you ever found the perfect church, it would cease to be perfect as soon as you joined it. Can I get an amen? If we started with the man in the mirror, we wouldn't have time to find fault in one another. Because we would be too busy taking care of our own stuff. Now most of us probably get our first look at ourselves while we're still pretty scary looking in the morning. Amen. Our eyes have that bleary, dazed look with that green, crusty stuff <laughs> growing in it. Our hair is sticking out in strange places, normally clean.